Are you curious how a real estate funnel works and how to generate quality leads? In this video, we're going to cover the second step or the second phase of how a well thought out and well built real estate funnel works. I like to call this the conversion experience. It will allow you to go from looking like another real estate salesperson to like an actual authority, a trusted advisor. My passion is helping real estate agents grow their trust, authority, and local celebrity so you can attract better quality leads that won't want to work with anybody else. I'm Sebastian Malinowski, and if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Don't forget the ringy dingy bell button. You may be asking, are real estate funnels just for generating leads? as in a list of emails and phone numbers of strangers, a good real estate funnel will actually do most of the heavy lifting for you. So by the time your lead goes through your conversion experience, they'll wanna talk to you. What? They wanna talk to me? Get out of town. Before we dive into this video, just wanna point you down to the description section below. After you're done watching, Take a look, you can register for more free content on my website and you can start growing your local influence and start attracting leads. Back to the video, Bob. Since we are covering the second step of a funnel, which is right here, the engage step, the link to the first video, I will put up here in the corner somewhere. The entire authority phase focuses on the actual funnel itself, the conversion experience. Put yourself in the shoes of a prospect, whether it's a buyer or a seller. They come across your landing page, your squeeze page, whatever you wanna call it. You offer them some information. Do you think people really want to put in their correct contact info? Why do you see a lot of Mickey Mouse signing up for your content? Fake phone numbers? The email is maybe the only real thing you're going to get, but most of the time it goes to their junk email. Why do you think that happens? Well, the public has been trained by the real estate community that when they leave their contact info on a website or a landing page, they're gonna get harassed. Harassed? No. Yeah, we both know they will. Come on, you know they will. The reality is most people are not ready to talk to a real estate agent yet. They just want information. They're doing their homework. And the purpose of a good real estate funnel is to separate the leads into two piles. The hot lead, they're ready to move, and the not so hot pile, the later on people. Now this group is just as important as this group, but wouldn't it be cool if you can actually separate them so you know who to focus on? The question here is, how do you make this happen? Right, Bob? How in the world are we gonna make this happen? Check this out. The engage part of the funnel is where you give value, real value, the type of value that makes you look like a rock star. I explained all this in the previous video. In this video, I wanna cover the five day email campaign. Essentially, it's a five day Dale. Where did Dale come from? Five day email campaign that will separate these hot leads from the looky loos. This way you can spend more of your time focusing on the hot leads, the ones that will actually convert. That's right, Bob, that's the secret sauce right there. I like to use what I call the five day movie trailer approach. What's the purpose of a movie trailer? To get you off your butt into the movie theater and pay to see the movie. Well, a well-designed email campaign will actually do the same thing. That's why it will allow you to separate your leads into two groups. The ones that will get off their butt and go to the movies and the ones that just like watching movie trailers. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? When I say get off their butt and go to watch the movie, I mean like buy a house or sell a house. But I, I think you knew that. Tell me you knew that's what I was talking about. Okay, good. And of course, the ultimate goal is to convert that lead to the point where they will want to have a conversation with you at the end of the five days. Let's get into it. Day one is what I like to call set the stage. Now, before we move on, just wanted to let you know that this email campaign could be done with actual email or the way I prefer it, email that links them to a video. That is the ultimate. Now, if you're freaked out about video or if you just wanna get the process going, you can attach the videos later, but start with the emails. 
It's so important that you have an actual five day follow up system for every lead that comes in. And here's the other second, but such an important point. When you create your lead magnet, your lead magnet will obviously speak to your avatar with a specific need or a specific problem. So you must adjust your five day, Dale, there's that Dale again, your five day email campaign to suit your avatar to speak to, to their current situation and problem. Does that make sense? If your landing page talks to a first time buyer, make sure your follow-up system is relevant for a first time buyer. So as you're watching me go through the five day email campaign, just keep in the back of your mind that you must adjust your emails to suit your avatar's problems. So when it comes to setting the stage, which is day one of your email campaign. So let's say somebody opts into your landing page right away. They will get this email. Now this email will come in the form of an email, but also this email could be part of the thank you page. You know how sometimes you go on a landing page, you leave your email and then like, thank you pops up the thank you page. That thank you page convert into your first email. If they don't run to their inbox, at least the first email is right there. Your first email will introduce you to your prospect. So your first email will deliver the goods that you promised them, but also you're going to explain a little bit about you. You're going to introduce yourself professionally and personally. So don't just get into the typical, Hey, I'm an expert. I'm a genius. I'm number one. I have the biggest team. Me, 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 me. Look at me when you're done looking at me, look at me some more. Yeah. None of that briefly explain who you are but also give them something you may consider personal. Tell them if you're a family person, if you have dogs, cats, whatever, tell them that you're addicted to Starbucks. Actually, no, that's my line. Don't do that. But you catch my drift, make it very personal. This movie trailer is a five day movie trailer. This email is the first of five parts. So at the end of this email, make sure in your PS section, tell them you're going to send them another email tomorrow and to keep their eye out for it. So essentially you're opening the loop for further conversation. So in day one, you've given them the thing of value. You've opened the loop of saying, let me introduce myself to you and I'm going to email you tomorrow. So now they will expect your email tomorrow. All right, Bob, let's pretend it's tomorrow. Now it's tomorrow day two, this day or this email, I like to call the relevant backstory. The reason for that is now you are going to tell them a story who doesn't love a good story. Now the story must focus on your avatars problem. Go back to day one. What did they sign up for? If they're a first time buyer, you gave them something. If they're a luxury seller, you gave them something. So your relevant backstory must be relevant to the thing that you gave them. Does that make sense? Explain in that email or video how perhaps you were dealing with the same problem. Now, if you weren't dealing with the same problem, maybe explain how one of your clients was dealing with that problem or somebody else you knew who was also facing that problem. Put yourself back in the shoes of your lead. Remember you're trying to solve problems. What problem do they have in the email? You're explaining, Hey, I had the same problem or I know someone else who had the same problem that will allow you to now connect with your lead. Now you're not just another salesperson. You're making them feel like you understand what they're going through. We all have problems, right? Bob, the key to your day two email or video. Don't solve the problem. What do you mean? I can't solve the problem. Yeah. The reason you don't want to solve the problem is so you can open the loop or conversation to happen on day three. Ah, uh, got it. Got it. At the end of that email or video, you're simply going to explain tomorrow, which is day three. I'll explain to you how to solve the problem. Day three, Bob, let's do this. This day I call the epiphany. 
Have you ever had a problem or faced a problem, you tried so hard to solve it and nothing was working and one day you had an epiphany and it was like, now I understand, I get it, it's crystal clear. You're simply going to open their eyes to something perhaps they've never seen before. You want an example? <laughs> they want an example. All right, all right, so maybe a seller listed a home with another agent, it took like six months, eventually expired, nothing happened. What if you explain in yesterday's email the situation another client was in that was just like that they had their home on the market it didn't sell you came along and you were different you sold that home but not just for any amount of money you blew their mind away you got the more money than they expected and of course in yesterday's email you didn't tell them how remember you opened that loop in today's email that's where the epiphany happens. You're going to share with them how you actually did it. And every good epiphany has a benefit. You're gonna open that loop again, oh yes you are. You're gonna tell them, you're gonna email them tomorrow and you're gonna tell them the real benefits of actually listing their home with you. But these benefits were something the seller wasn't expecting. Dum dum dum. I know, you leave a question mark open. Oh yeah, now we're on day four. Now you explain the hidden benefits. And the hidden benefits aren't, hey hey, my client was able to make more money or walk away with more money. That is an obvious benefit that yes, you should include in that email. But the hidden benefit is because you made them so much more money, they were actually able to take their family to Disneyland, which brought the family so much closer. And now they looked at you as part of the family. <laughs> I know, I know you didn't see this coming. I know. Hence the hidden benefit. Obviously you got to keep that loop open. So you tell them tomorrow will be your final email and to keep their eye out for something very special. Did I do it again? Did, did I leave you hanging again? Bob one, number five. Okay. This email is now a call to action. Actually, that's a good name. Let's call it a call to action. In this email, you're going to give them two choices. Choice number one, have I given you enough benefit? And if you're ready to buy or sell, should we have a chat? Second choice you, you may want to give them is, well, maybe you're not ready. But let me know if you're not, because I don't certainly don't want to continue sending you emails you may not want to read. That's all you're doing. The fifth email, you're separating that pile. We either connect, we have a conversation, or we don't. And in that email, you should have an offer that perhaps expires. Some people call it the, I got an offer you can't refuse. The godfather offer, or a one-time offer. Once the timer hits zero, the offer is off the table. Give that person something that entices them. And when they get your last email, you tell them, by the way, if you're ready, if you want to connect with me, here is a bonus I will actually give you. I don't market it, I don't advertise it, but if you want to chat, I'll give you this thing. So you can see how important the engage part of your funnel is. It's the actual conversion experience. If you really want to separate yourself from the rest of the real estate agent population, try that. Try this concept. Nobody is doing this. I mean, nobody. Automatically, you're going to stand out. All right, question of the day. Are you using real estate funnels? If you are, what's working for you? Put your answer in the comment section below. Part two of this question, if you're not using funnels, why not? What's your stumbling block? What, what is or are the issues you're having? Please also put your answer in the comment section below. I do my best to answer as many questions as I can, so maybe I'll help you out if you're struggling with something. My name is Sebastian Malinowski. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, bell, all that jazz. We'll chat on the next one. Take care.